So here we're going to talk about our next sort of groupings of aqueous phase reactions, and those are the acid-base neutralization reactions. We talked about, we've already talked about precipitation reactions. So now, first thing we need to do is clearly define what an acid and a base is. And we've already sort of defined them way back when, when we were naming molecules that acids form hydrogen ion in solution. So let's talk a little bit more about what, what we mean by that. So let us consider hydrobromic acid, which is HBr. And then we know HBr is a strong electrolyte. It's in our list of strong acids. So when we write 2.4 molar HBr subaqueous, just like when we write NaCl aqueous, it's a strong electrolyte, when we write it all together, it implies that the, the, it actually exists as a molecule in solution, which it doesn't. It's a strong electrolyte, so it actually exists when we write HBr subaqueous. What we really mean is hydrogen ion and bromide ion. And again, that just goes back to the definition of strong electrolyte. So HBr is a strong electrolyte, and because it forms hydrogen ion in solution, that is our definition of an acid. So most acids are actually weak electrolytes. Now, we haven't used the phrase weak electrolyte, um, except for way back when we first defined what electrolytes. We said there were strong electrolytes, weak electrolytes, and non-electrolytes. And when we were talking about precipitation reactions, we talked about, we said that everything was either black and white. You either completely dissociated or you didn't dissociate at all. Well, it turns out the truth is actually somewhere between. There are species that are weak electrolytes. So let's talk a little bit more about what that is in terms of acids. So here is acetic acid, which you know as uh, vinegar. That's what acetic acid is. So acetic acid is a weak acid, which means only some of it dissociates into hydrogen ion and acid ion. And so we have this sort of double-headed arrow to sort of indicate that. So what this sort of means is that we spend sort of most of our time over here and a little bit of time over here. Now remember what weak electrolyte means. That means that partially dissociates in water. So when acetate, when acetic acid dissociates into hydrogen ion and acetate ion, only some of it dissociates. So if you want to think of it in terms of a percentage, you might say at any particular point in time that 90% of the acetic acid molecules are still together. They're still attached, they're dissolved, but not dissociated. And the other 10% have sort of like fallen apart. It's the easiest way of thinking about it. So only some of the species dissociate. And then we have bases, which again form hydroxide ion in solution. And again, we have the same sort of shorthand notation that sodium hydroxide is a strong base. It's in our list of strong bases, and it's a sodium species. So we know it completely dissociates. So sodium hydroxide dissociates into sodium ion and a hydroxide ion. And the fact that there's a hydroxide ion in solution, that is what defines sodium hydroxide as a base, because it forms hydroxide ion in solution. And just like how most acids are weak acids, most bases are weak bases. So here is a case of ammonia in the presence of water to form ammonium ion and hydroxide ion. Now ammonia is technically a base because there is, when I put it in water liquid, it forms hydroxide ion. Just because the hydroxide ion isn't part of the species doesn't mean it's not a base. The, the act of a hydroxide ion magically appearing is an indication that the species is acting as a base. So ammonia is a base, and again we have this sort of double-headed arrow such that when we bubble ammonia gas into water, it will dissolve, but only some of it will sort of kind of dissociate, even though in this case dissociation is forming an aqueous ion and forming a hydroxide ion. So this is the same sort of concept in terms of dissolving and dissociating. Okay, so let us now talk about that reaction, the neutralization reaction. So put very simply, a neutralization reaction is we're neutralizing an acid and a base by reacting them with each other. So we have an acid reacting with a base, forming some neutral species, meaning non-acidic or non-basic, and water. And we can use the terminology and the words that we learned before regarding complete ionic equations and net ionic equations in a similar sort of fashion. So here is hydrochloric acid, strong acid. Here is sodium hydroxide, strong base. And if we just do our switching of partners, we take the hydrogen and the hydroxide ion, put those together, we get water liquid. Notice that's liquid, not aqueous. 
and we take the sodium ion from here and the chloride ion from there and that makes our other formula. So this is very similar to making our molecular equations just like we did for precipitation reactions. So then we break everything up into to make a complete ionic equation so the hydrogen, hydrogen chloric acid actually exists as hydrogen ion and chloride ion, sodium ion and hydroxide ion. So those will break up. And then on the product side, the sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is a strong electrolyte, so it dissociates into sodium ion and chloride ion. And then we have water liquid. So it, the hydrogen ion and the hydroxide ion coming together to form water liquid. And since in this case, sodium ion and chloride ion are spectators, we are left with the net ionic equation hydrogen ion reacting with hydroxide ion to form water liquid. So here's a, another similar reaction. Here we have magnesium hydroxide, which is a weak base, reacting with hydrochloric acid. So this is my Lanta. It's the active ingredient in my Lanta, the acid indigestion medicine. There's hydrochloric acid. Our possible products are, well, we take magnesium ion and chloride ion. We make magnesium chloride, whose formula is MgCl2. And again, the hydrogen ion and the hydroxide ion form water. Obviously, this is not balanced. So after we balance it and then break it up, we are left with magnesium ion, two hydroxides, two hydrogen ions, two chloride ions, forming two waters. Again, waters come together to form water liquid. One magnesium ion, two chloride ions. In this case, the chloride and the magnesium are our spectators. And our net ionic equation is exactly the same as that of before. Hydrogen ion plus hydroxide ion forming water liquid. Now, just to make sure that you understand that the net ionic equations for all acid-base neutralization reactions are the same. They're not. Um, you can have some other possible reactions. What is key though is that they always form water and some neutral species. Um, and Just for comparison, or just as part of an example, um, I want to show you the balanced chemical equation what happens when you mix hydrochloric acid and baking soda you actually have the same net ionic equation you would if you reacted vinegar and baking soda and we all know what happens there. You form, in this case we form, there's our spectator ions, our sodium ion and our chloride ion, but instead of hydrogen or hydrogen bicarbonate, we actually get water liquid and carbon dioxide gas. So in this case we actually have three products. There's our acid, there's our base, there's our neutral species, there's our water, but we're also forming another neutral product, in this case carbon dioxide gas. So the net ionic equation is hydrogen ion from hydrochloric acid reacting with the what's known as the bicarbonate ion of sodium bicarbonate forming water and carbon dioxide. So this is technically an acid-base reaction but it's not forming just water in terms of our net ionic equation. We're also forming this carbon dioxide gas. And again I'm just sort of showing you that for comparison's sake that not all acid-base neutralization reactions have the same net ionic equation, but most of them follow this hydrogen ion plus hydroxide ion. These are the most basic type of acid-base neutralization reactions.